In this video, you will learn on how to calculate measures of central tendency. A measure of central tendency locates the center of a set of data. The most common measures of central tendency are the mean, which is the arithmetic average of a set of data, median is the middle value or the arithmetic mean of the two middle values in a set of data arranged in either ascending or descending order of magnitude. And lastly, mode is the value which occurs the greatest frequency. The calculation of measures of central tendency can be ungroup or group. When we say group, data are below 30. On the other hand, when it is group, data are 30 and above. First, let us have ungroup data. For example, we have here a data 5, 6, 2, 4, 7, 8, 3, 5, 6, and 6. Find the mean, median, and mode. First, let us find the mean or the arithmetic average. So mean, which is x bar, is equal to summation of x divided by n. So summation of x is the sum of the data. And n is the number of data. So the sum of x is 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3, plus 5, plus 6, plus 6. Then divide it by the total number of data, which is 10. That is now 52 divided by 10, which is equal to 5.2. Next is the median. So median is the middle value or the arithmetic mean of the two middle values. Ibig sabihin, Kapag isa lang yung middle value mo, then that will be your median. However, if there are two middle values, then you need to get the arithmetic mean of those two middle values. First, let us arrange the given data in either ascending or descending order. So let us try both arrangement and then let us find out if they have the same median. First, let us arrange it in ascending order. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, and 8. Then let us also arrange it in descending order. So that is 7, 6, sorry, 8, 7, 6, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2. Then get the middle values. So as we can see from the two arrangements, we have the given or the two middle values which are 5 and 6. So they are just the same. Then, get the arithmetic mean of those two middle values. That is now 5 plus 6 divided by 2. That is 11 divided by 2 which is equal to 5.5. And last is to find the mode. So we all know that mode is the data with the greatest frequency. As we can see from our data, 6 appears with greatest frequency among other data. Therefore, our mode is 6. Then, next example, 5 people play golf and that one hole their scores are 4, 3, 5, 4, and 7. Fine mean, median, and mode. First, is to find for the mean. So that is the summation of x divided by n, which is 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 7 divided by 5. Then that is now 23 divided by 5, which is equal to 4.6. Next is the median. So we have to arrange it in either ascending or descending order. So we have here the ascending arrangement and we also have here the descending arrangement. Then locate the middle value. So as we can see, we have the middle value of 
4. Therefore, the median is 4. And lastly is to find the mode. So from the set of data, 4 occurs with greatest frequency. Therefore, our mode is 4. So that is measures of central tendency in an ungrouped data. And next is the group data. As I have said a while back, it is grouped if the data are 30 and above. For example, below are the scores of 40 first-year college students of PLTCI in a mathematics examination conducted by Mr. Lapus. As we can see from this example, we have a total data of 40. Then, find the mean, median, and mode. But before that, we need first to construct a frequency table. So what is this frequency table? A frequency table is a tabular arrangement of the data. So we have here steps to follow in constructing a frequency table. First, from the row data, find the highest value which is x sub h and the lowest value which is x sub l. Then, find the difference between the two values obtained in step 1. This is called the range or the uppercase R. Then, step 3, determine the class size. This is done by dividing the range by the desired number of class intervals. The number of class intervals is usually taken from 5 to 20 depending on the data. Next, list the class intervals starting from the lowest class interval. The lower limit of the lower class interval should be divisible by the class size. And lastly, make a careful tally of each class interval. So from our data, the highest score is 37. Then we have the lowest score of 9. Then getting now the range, that is 37 minus 9 which is equal to 28. Then for the class size, that is range divided by the desired class size. So for example, my desired class size is 10. So that is 28 divided by 10 which is equal to 2.8 or that can be rounded as 3. Notice that the lowest score which is 9 is divisible by the computed class size which is 3. However, if the lowest score is not divisible or cannot be divided by the computed class size, then you can try another desired class size. So that's a matter of trial and error. Then it's now time for us to create class intervals. As you can see from the table at the bottom part, we have the class interval of 9 to 11. Since the lowest data is 9, then we can start with 9. And then the computed class size is 3. Therefore, each class must consist of 3 numbers. So from the interval 9 to 11, it consists of 3 numbers. We have 9, 10, and 11. Same is true with the class interval of 12 to 14. It has 12, 13, and 14. And so on and so on. And from the highest class, which is 36 to 38, we can stop already with that class. It's because the highest data is 37. Therefore, it can already accommodate all the data. Then, next is to find for the frequency by means of tallying. So, we have here the given data from the example. So, let us find if how many times did these numbers on each class interval, interval appeared on the set of data. So first, let us have the class interval 
36 to 38. So it appeared twice. Next is the class interval 33 to 35. We have a frequency of 1. Then 30 to 32, we have 4. 27 to 29, 5. 24 to 26, 9. 21 to 23, 6. Then 7, 3, 2, and 1. Then, we are now ready to calculate for the mean for group data. So it is given in the formula, x bar is equal to the summation of f x divided by n, where x bar is the mean, summation of f x is the sum of the product of the frequency and the midpoint. So let us go back with the frequency table. So we need to find for the midpoint which is x and the product of the frequency and the midpoint or that is fx. In order for us to get the midpoint, we need to get the arithmetic mean or the median of each class intervals. First, we have the class interval 36 to 38. So if we get the mean or the median of that, that is 36 plus 38 divided by 2 which is 37. Then followed by 33 to 35. So 33 plus 35 divided by 2 that is 34. Then 30 plus 32 divided by 2 that is 31. 27 plus 29 divided by 2, 28. Then 24 plus 26 divided by 2, that is 25. Followed by 22, 19, 16, 13, and 10. So after getting the midpoint, we are now ready to find for the product of the frequency and midpoint, which is your fx. So first, we have 2 times 37, which is equal to 74, followed by 1 times 34, 34. Then 4 times 31, that is 124. 5 times 28 is equal to 140. 9 times 25 is equal to 225. 6 times, six times 22 is 132. 7 times 19 is equal to 133. 3 times 16 is 48. 2 times 13 is 26. And 1 times 10 is 10. Then, get the total frequency. That is, n is equal to 40. Then, we also need to get the summation of fx or the sum of all the data under fx. So that is 74 plus 34 plus 124 plus 140 plus 225 plus 132 plus 133 plus 48 plus 26 plus 10. That is equal to 946. Then we are now ready to solve for the mean. So we have the following data that we have calculated a while back. The summation of fx is equal to 946 and n is equal to 40. Then substitute this data into the formula. That is now 946 divided by 40 which is equal to 23.65. Next is the median of group data. So it is given in the formula. MD is equal to L plus the quantity N all over 2 minus CF sub V all over F sub M times I. Where MD is the median, L is the lower class boundary, N is the total frequency, CF sub V is the cumulative frequency of the class below the median class. 
F sub M is the frequency of the median class and I is the class size. So let us use the same example. So we have here the frequency table of the example. Let us find for the cumulative frequency. So how do we do that? First, let us start at the bottom or the lowest class interval. So we need to get the frequency of the lower class interval. So that is 1. Then the next thing to do is to add the frequency of the class above it. So that will be 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3. Then same process, add the frequency of the class above it. So that is 3 plus 3 which is 6. Then add again the frequency of the class above it. That is 6 plus 7 which is 13. Then 13 plus 6 which is 19. 19 plus 9 which is 28. Then 33, 37, 38, and 40. Then it's now time for us to find the median class. So how do we find the median class? So we need first to calculate n all over 2. So n is the total frequency which is 40 divided by 2, that is 20. So in order for us to locate the median class, we need to add up the frequency in either from highest to lowest or from lowest to highest until that such time we reach the desired amount which is 20. So pwedeng lumagpas, wag lang kulang. For example, let us try adding up the frequency from top to bottom. So we have 2 plus 1 which is 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 is 12 plus 9 is 21. As we can see, 20 falls on the class interval of 24 to 26. So let us try it also from bottom to top. So we have 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 7 is 13, plus 6 is 19. So kulang pa rin yung 20. Then i-add pa natin yung 9 that is 28. So 20 falls at the class interval 24 to 26. Therefore, 24 to 26 is our median class. Then, find for the lower class boundary or that is L. So L is the mean of the lower limit of the median class and the upper limit of the class below the median class. So we have here 24, which is the lower limit of the median class, and 23, which is the upper limit of the class below the median class. So let us get the mean of the two, that is 24 plus 23 divided by 2, that is 47 divided by 2, which is equal to 23.5. Next is to find the below cumulative frequency. So below cumulative frequency is the cumulative frequency below the median class. So our median class is 24 to 26. Therefore, we need to get the cumulative frequency of the class below it, which is 21 to 23. Therefore, we have a below cumulative frequency of 19. Then, find for the frequency of the median class. So the median class is 24 to 26 and its frequency is 9. So the frequency of the median class is equal to 9. Then, we are now ready to solve for the median. So, we have the following data that we have calculated a while back. The lower class boundary is equal to 23.5. The below cumulative frequency is 19. The frequency of the median class is 9. And the class size of 3. Then, substitute these values into the formula. That is now equal to 23.5 
plus the quantity 40 divided by 2 minus 19 all over 9 times 3. Then simplify further. That is now 23.5 plus the quantity 1 all over 9 times 3. That is equal to 23.5 plus 0.33 which is equal to 23.83. That is the median. And last is the mode for group data. So it can be calculated by MO is equal to L plus the quantity D sub 1 all over D sub 1 plus D sub 2 times I. Where L is the lower class boundary of the model class. D sub 1 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the class below it. D sub 2 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the class above it. And I is the class size. So let us use the same example. First, we need to locate the model class. The model class is the class with the highest frequency. So from our frequency table, the class with the highest frequency is 24 to 26. It has a frequency of 9. Therefore, that will be the model class. Next is to solve for L or the lower class boundary of the model class. So that can be calculated by finding the mean of the lower limit of the model class and the upper limit of the class below the model class. So we have here 24 and 23. 24 is the lower limit of the model class. 23 is the upper limit of the class below the model class. Therefore, that is 24 plus 23 divided by 2. That is 47 divided by 2 which is equal to 23.5. Next is to find for D sub 1. So D sub 1 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the frequency of the class below it. So that is 9 and 6. Therefore, 9 minus 6 is equal to 3. So D sub 1 is equal to 3. Then next is to find for D sub 2. D sub 2 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the frequency of the class above it. So that is 9 and 5. Therefore, D sub 2 is equal to 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So we are now ready to solve for the mode. So we have the following data that we have calculated a while back. The lower class boundary of the model class is equal to 23.5, D sub 1 is 3, D sub 2 is 4, and I is equal to 3. So substitute these values into the formula that is now equal to 23.5 plus the quantity 3 all over 3 plus 4 times 3. Then simplify further, 23.5 plus the quantity 3 all over 7 times 3. That is 23.5 plus 1.29 which is equal to 24.79. So those are the measures of central tendency. Thank you for watching and I hope you have learned something.